I'm Duncan McLeod, and this is Tech Central's TCS Plus, the business technology show, which is brought to you today by Veeam. Now, the discussion today with Veeam executives explores the subject of data resilience and why Veeam is considered the home of data resilience in Africa. My guests in this first part of the episode are Mina Migali. He is Regional Vice President, EMEA East, and he's joined by Brendan Woodlake, who is Regional Director and Country Manager for Africa, both, of course, at Veeam. Welcome to you both, and uh, and thanks for your time. Uh, Mina and uh, Brendan will be joined a little later in the discussion by Ian Engelbrecht, who is Head of Technical Sales for Africa, and Lisa Stradom, who is Senior Manager, Channel and Alliances for Africa. But first, I'd like to welcome uh, Brendan and Mina into the Tech Central studio. Thanks for making the time. Thank you. Good Thanks to be here. Me. Pleasure. Now, uh, Veeam is a global leader in data protection and management solutions. It specializes in backup, disaster recovery, and data security. Brendan, let me start with you. Um, tell me a little bit more about Veeam's focus in the data resilience space and how it impacts its growth and strategy on the African continent. Yeah, Duncan, thank you. Look, Veeam's been a, an industry leader in the data protection uh, backup space for many years now, starting back with a humble virtual machine a good 15, 16 years ago. Uh, what we've continued to do is service our customers across the African continent uh, and continue to bring new solutions to market to meet them where they're at, be it virtual machine backup, be it uh, physical workloads that they need to protect, data that's on-premise or data that's in the cloud. You know, As our customers have been searching what's best for their business in order to meet the demands for their customers, Veeam has globally innovated to keep pace with solutions for them. Okay. So what are some of the new, unique challenges that, uh, that businesses in Africa face when it comes to securing and managing their data? Yeah, I think maybe not unique, uh, but what's definitely become more prevalent over the last couple of years is the first is uh, protecting data in different locations. So mm -hmm. as we're generating so much more data nowadays, uh, be it on-prem, be it on your laptop, be it at a, a data center or in the cloud, you have to consistently manage and protect that data across different locations. So that's a unique challenge in Africa. If you think of some of our bigger multinationals working across multiple countries, each with data sovereignty rules, different locations, different network speeds, different firewalling, etc. Uh, we've been working hard to help those customers simply and consistently protect their, their data, mm -hmm. which is, tends to be one of their most important assets. Okay. And I think another thing that's really uh, changed in the industry, Veeam does a couple of reports every year. One of the reports we do is a ransomware trends report, is the prevalence of hackers and ransomware organizations trying to get to that data and then auction it back to customers. That We see an, a huge increase in prevalence of that happening in Africa, and customers are struggling to deal with that effectively. Is, is Africa more hard hit than other parts of the world, and if so, why? Yeah, so I think the data shows it is. It's definitely, uh, an, let's call it an easy landing zone for hackers. Um, I think you've got multi-generational uh, technologies within customer landscapes across Africa. You've got some customers that are right at the forefront of technology adoption using the best. And you've got many customers with uh, legacy infrastructure, legacy ways of approaching data protection and management. And that tends to pose an easy access point to these, uh, what we call bad actors or these organizations mm. that are trying to get to the data. Right, right. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to delve into this in, in some more detail later in the discussion, but maybe just from a helicopter view perspective, um, what are or how can uh, Veeam's portfolio of data protection solutions help these African organizations overcome some of these challenges? Yeah, I think uh, maybe just to start right at the back of the basics, you know, sure. Veeam's been in this uh, business for a very long time. It, it is what we do. We're experts at helping customers protect their data. And what has been a consistent focus over the years is as we fleshed out the portfolio, is helping uh, is is looking at different technologies. Sorry, let me repeat that. Sure, we may have to just. Direct, you want audio marker? You good? All right, just carry on. All right, so so Veeam is the expert in data protection. We we've, we've been doing this for many years. What we've consistently done is bring new products to market to meet customers where they're at. So, be they have they SaaS offerings in the cloud? We're looking at protecting them there. Be it uh, on-premise data, be it virtual or physical we have multiple solutions that can help the customer protect their data. Um, yeah. Okay, good. Well, let's, uh, let's dive into this topic then in a, in a, a little uh, more detail, Amina. With, with Africa facing 
rapid uh, digital uh, transformation. What role does Veeam's concept of data resilience play in helping African businesses maintain continuous availability of their data in the face of these growing threats? Um, I think it's um, an important point to differentiate between data resilience and, and data protection because that's okay. where, where, where it takes us, right? Um, re- resilience asks of customers to be, or, or of organizations to be agile in terms of response um, and in case of a disaster because it's um, not about if a disaster happens, it's really when mm-hmm. that will happen. And especially as Brandon mentioned, it's, uh, uh, we expect to see ransomware uh, at- uh, attacks hit any organization, especially in Africa, right? So um, I think eventually the way that we look at how we can help our organizations is that one, we can help with tools, and we've mentioned uh, a few of them. We've been in the business for a very long time. We know um, how to help our customers there, be it at the cloud, be it on-prem, um, regardless of how they um, eventually store their data or consume their data. And the second part of it is also to make sure that uh, not only the tools are there, but also to help as well with processes and people mm-hmm. if required, right? Um, so we come with um, history of uh, knowledge, if you may, and a breadth of knowledge in terms of how we can uh, orchestrate uh, data recovery uh, procedures. And we help as well with a few uh, tools that um, uh, automate a lot of that to make sure that it's something that in the back uh, mind rather than mm-hmm. uh, front of um, of our customers making it a little bit easier and uh, finally also with people so eventually we can also help with um, experts who sit down and discuss with um, our customers what is the best practices that needs to be employed to uh, to be um, more agile mm-hmm. over there right so with, with this, data resilience means that I, instead of worrying if my data is there in case something goes wrong and when things go wrong, I'm actually a step ahead and in case of a disaster, I'm able to be back up and running as quickly as possible, relying on this data in order to have my bu- business continuity uh, effective, right? So today when when we look at, at Africa, right, it's... It's a huge growth uh, region, not not only for Veeam, but for the world, right? There's tons of um, investment that's coming in over here because of uh, the kind of uh, prospect that we have. So again, as Brandon mentioned, a big target area for uh, those who want to hold um, these uh, organizations captive. Mm-hmm. So eventually, with our solutions, be, uh, be it the tools or helping with the processes or the people, we we help them stay agile, stay resilient, uh, having their business continuity always um, top of mind and uh, helping them with that. I imagine you prefer um, your clients to be proactive in adopting these tools to, to prevent these things from happening in the first place. But I imagine a lot of the phone calls you get are, help, I've been hacked. What do you tell clients like that or prospective clients? So anyone who comes for help, we start by helping them, right? Mm-hmm. So that's uh, that's our number one priority is to make sure that uh, uh, if we can help them with uh, with anything that we have, uh, definitely we go ahead and help them. Uh, I go back to the idea of buying an, a car insurance policy after after the crash, right? right. So it's uh, um, for me um, setting up the right procedures and processes as well as having the right tools is is a must, and that's where we come in with. Um, our resilience, re- resilience studies, um, um, as well as uh, what our pre-sales uh, team are doing uh, fantastically across the, mm-hmm. across the region, sitting down and doing a gap analysis of what needs to be done in order to be resilient, right? And so we try not to have that happening again uh, one more time. And the reality is our customers are, are not complaining if... Uh, if they are running on best practices today, we we haven't heard of any. Okay, good, good. You mentioned uh, a bit earlier um, your support for not only on-prem IT, but also for clouds and presumably multi-cloud environments as well. Um, Does the shift to hybrid computing make the protection of data and um, ensuring the resilience of data that much more difficult? And how does Veeam help its clients manage that? 
That's a very good question. I think uh, it makes it a lot more difficult for, you know, we've seen it from our, uh, the customers that we work with that um, they have to juggle between um, uptaking all, all these new technologies and new architectures in um, order to uh, be ahead of the game, as, as Brandon mentioned, right? So for for us, it's uh, difficult for them to adopt the same strategy for a shifting, uh, let's say, environment. Uh, for us, one of our you know many pillars that uh, that we've uh, built our products at uh, across is uh, one we may we don't care where your data is. Mm -hmm. We want to protect it, and we have a solution for, be it on a hyperscaler, be it on prem, be it, uh, um, be it on a virtual machine or uh, or uh, on a physical machine. It doesn't matter. We our solution set encompasses all of that, uh, and we keep on building uh, on top year over year, and not only through our organic growth, but also through a lot of the alliances that we tap mm -hmm. into. So eventually, we work with. Uh, tons of technology alliances uh, across the world to make sure that we understand where our customers are going and what is important for them and eventually protecting uh, that data um, across the board. So for us, um, that is one aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And how you consume, uh, let's say, our uh, solution set is also another aspect of it. You know, uh, be, uh, with Veeam Data Cloud, we are able to provide even backup as a service. So for for organizations that are taking their entire architecture into uh, as a service model, we follow that uh, as well uh, with them. And eventually, what they care about is not only the protection piece, it's also about w the recovery piece, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's the more important thing. And a key pillar for us is data freedom. And data freedom means we, if you want to recover in the cloud and you are on-prem, we'll help you with that. From one cloud to another, we'll help you with that. Back on-prem and we'll mm -hmm. help you with that. We don't. Um, we want to make sure that we do what's right for the customer and that's uh, a key tenant of what our product set is about. So. Okay. okay. Do you help clients as well? I don't know what the correct term is, a war game, if you like, um, uh, incidents, um, a, a potential ransomware attack, for example, walk through the steps. This is what may happen. This is the data you may lose. This is what you need to do. You go through that whole process in the pre-sales, do you? Uh, that's a great question, actually. We, we do it uh, in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. One, through our pre-sales engagement, obviously, we, we sit down and um, when we get the right data from the customers, we always give them um, that gap analysis and that yep. encompasses the, the entire thing. Um, however, we earlier this year, we've uh, also acquired a company, uh, Covware, uh, that uh, is an incident response uh, company that oh, yes. completes the picture, if you may, uh, for us. So we're not only actively protecting the data, but also being with the customer in case an incident uh, happens. And um, you know, they're experts in uh, what they do. They um, so they also help with the analysis, the pre. Uh, work, if you may. So yes. um, uh, they come and provide their analysis, what needs to be um, uh, closed off, what what needs to be done uh, further on. And in case of a disaster or in case of an attack, they are in the trenches with uh, with the customer, actually mm -hmm. ahead of the customer. They're, they're fronting the engagement with uh, the attackers and uh, the criminals, as we like to call them, just to make sure that we um, negotiate the right things and help recover the data with, with the least damages, maybe sometimes even without yes. uh, coming to to their asks. Right? right. So we're there pre, during, and and after mm -hmm. uh, with Covware as well. Okay. Brendan, uh, Veeam obviously works um, with companies across a range of industries. Um, do you have to have different conversations depending on the industry, or is it all a fairly similar thing? It's data, data is data at the end of the day. Look, I think at the heart of it, um, technically we're protecting the data, right? Mm. So that's that tends to be consistent. What is customized is the, the solutions that we build through our partner ecosystem, our channel ecosystem for customers. And that varies depending on you know, what type of data they're trying to protect. That's a key part of the, the solution that we built for them, where the data is located, uh, the budget that they have available, the intention that they have for that data, as an example. So we definitely customize solutions. Um, and a large part of the success of that is the large uh, channel ecosystem that mm -hmm. we have, the award-winning partner ecosystem that we have in this region, to service thousands of customers. And we are blessed to have thousands of customers in Africa using our technology. 
Uh, we need a strong partner ecosystem to help us do that, especially in remote countries that are okay. outside of South Africa. Do you work exclusively through the channel? We do. Veeam? Okay. We do. So we, we engage with customers directly. We consult to customers directly. We help them architect. We service them directly, as Mina was saying, through the likes of our proactive offerings or just normal support. But all, ultimately, all financial transactions mm. are done through our channel. Okay. Yeah. And out of interest, do you find that the conversations you have with African organizations are different to the conversations you might have elsewhere in the world? Are there, are there security and data protection issues that are, are specific to African organizations? I wouldn't say specific, but we do have some nuanced conversations in Africa that we don't have in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So as an example, in South Africa, the hyperscalers have local data centers, yeah, data, data is sitting in the country. Yes. Uh, and that makes a certain flavor of conversation, whereas if you're talking to a bank in Ghana or a telco in Tanzania, um, they may want to use cloud providers and the data's uh, not in country. So we need to obviously cater for that and help guide mm -hmm. them there. What we also see in Africa is a lot of uh, customers jump generations of technology. So as an example, Kubernetes uh, has been very prevalent and adopted in the banking segment across Africa, in fact, more so than in South Africa. And that takes a different way, it's a different architecture, a different form of compute. It takes a different solution type to back up that data and protect it. So, so there we definitely have niche conversations around protecting that, that mm -hmm. type of architecture as opposed to what we do in South Africa. Okay, so it tends to be more on-prem in the rest of Africa? It does, yes, okay. you're right. Do you think that's going to change? I mean, I, I presume there is also cloud uh, hyperscale infrastructure going on, going in in other African it, countries. What, what we see is we see a lot of private cloud infrastructure being built in Africa, mm. in particular government. So that's been quite interesting. We, we've been involved uh, with a, a number of, let's call it, uh, a national government building infrastructure and private cloud to service uh, the services of, of other countries like passport control, um, census data, medical facilities, etc. So we've been involved in a, a couple of interesting projects in Tanzania, another very big project on the go right now in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think I, we actually see the impact of that affecting service delivery and really improving service delivery in those countries. Um, what is interesting, though, yeah. is our public sector business in South Africa has probably been our best performing sector this year. And we see a lot of uh, the South African thinking, pu public sector thinking, emulating what's taking place in Africa and bringing services and trying to build more private cloud mm -hmm. offerings. And that obviously takes, uh, there's a lot of data involved which we need to protect and help them yeah. manage. And they have obviously have been uh, the victims of uh, quite a number of attacks in yeah, the last... Uh, to, to your earlier yeah. question, um, mm. you know, sometimes uh, what we're selling, you could think of it as a form of insurance. Sometimes the best day to sell insurance is the day after the fire. But, and, <laughs> and we wish we could have been involved with many of those customers before, consulted yeah. and helped them better prepare for, uh, unfortunately, those incidents that they faced. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. You mentioned the importance of your uh, channel partners. Um, can you maybe share some ex examples of where uh, local partners have made a tangible impact in serving your clients in Africa? Mm, I think, look, Two obvious examples. The one would be a local language. So as we're you know, scaling up business and operations in countries like Angola, there's a, a specific understanding of the market, the industries, the oil and gas industry, the processing of oil and gas and the finance that helps to run that industry for Angola. And so partners there have expertise in that region and then obviously language skills and, and skill set that helps service them being so isolated from uh, public cloud offerings, mm -hmm. etc. And the other is... Um, a, a big market for Veeam across Africa is backup as a service or DR as a service. Mm -hmm. And that relies on our technology, but more importantly, our channel ecosystem to build the solutions, price them effectively for the local market, and then help onboard customers with all the challenges they have, be it networking challenges or, or data challenges. Mm -hmm. um, but we see partners playing a key role in taking those uh, offerings out to market. Before I welcome on our next two guests, um, I'm just going to ask you guys one last question. Uh, in fact, let me ask you, Mina and, and Brendan, feel free to come in here. But what do you, what do you see as the big uh, opportunities for Veeam in Africa in the next three to five years? Um, I think Africa in general is uh, all in all a huge market for us, a huge growth potential for us at, at Veeam. And uh, um, I've been working with Brendan and uh, the local leadership team and making sure that we capitalize on that uh, across uh, across the region. 
Now, uh, that, that starts with South Africa, obviously, and with uh, a lot of uh, uh, the key verticals o- over here. But uh, it also gets exciting when we look at other key markets uh, around Africa. Um, you know, uh, as uh, Brandon mentioned, you know, like uh, whether Angola or Kenya or Nigeria or, or whatnot, uh, they all come with their challenges, but they definitely provide us a great uh, potential for uh, for growth. And we've been uh, doing great. It's about how can we continue doubling down on that growth and uh, capturing more and more of uh, the market that we have over there. So we will continue to invest uh, in Africa. We are continuing to focus on uh, how we deliver results mm-hmm. to our, our customers over here in, in Africa. So definitely uh, something to look out uh, for. Great. Brennan, any concluding thoughts on the opportunity? Yeah, I, I think I'll add two to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first is that data is just exploding. Be it on our personal devices with you know, songs and photos or in a business environment, the, the amount of data is just increasing exponentially. And if you take some of the big drivers of business in the tech industry over the last year, being AI, AI relies on good, clean, mm-hmm. secure, well-structured data that needs to be protected, whether it's you know, customers built that solution on-prem or in the cloud. So the opportunity for Veeam to help customers protect that data is, is only increasing. But then to tag onto that, I think to effectively do that, you need skills. And the opportunity for skills development and growth in mm-hmm. Africa is huge. And that's something that personally excites me. I've always been, um, I yeah, started my career as a lecturer, uh, ultimately doing okay. MCSE lecturing. And that's still in the heart of me, uh, being able to build solutions through the company, support through our partners to skill up more people, give more people opportunities for a career mm-hmm. and help them improve their career and grow their career and ultimately uh, do more. So that, that's exciting for us uh, as the Veeam team. Fantastic. Brendan Woodlake is uh, Regional Director and Country Manager, Africa, and uh, Mina Migali is Regional Vice President, EMEO East, uh, both at Veeam. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, now through the magic of technology, I'm going to click my fingers and my next two guests will instantly appear before me. Right, to continue the Veeam conversation, I'm joined now by Ian Engelbrecht. Ian is Head of Technical Sales for Africa at Veeam. And he's joined by Lisa Stradum, who is Senior Manager, Channel and Alliances for Africa, both, of course, at Veeam. Welcome to you. Thank you. Ian, let me start with you. Um, Veeam's product portfolio includes solutions like Veeam Backup and Replication and Veeam Availability Suite. How do these solutions specifically help African organizations protect their data and ensure rapid recovery across hybrid, multi-cloud and on-prem environments? Sure. So. First off, data for an organization is the lifeblood of any organization, right? So our products are modeled around uh, protecting that data, making the data secure, as well as if we talk about Veeam Availability Suite, Mm -hmm. we have some monitoring and analytics around that data. It's about giving insights to what we're protecting, how we're protecting it, and if it is protected and secure, as well as clean. So we go through a few processes. Uh, We call it uh, 32110 which is we believe customers should have three copies of their data, um, two of those on two different storage medium, uh, one being offline and one being essentially immutable, which means cannot be changed Mm -hmm. and uh, air-gapped effectively. Um, But through that data, we need to then provide information back to the customer to ensure that, yes, if you do recover that, we're not recovering bad data into an environment, and uh, then also the growth around that. So if they're planning for the future, that's where our analytics monitoring comes in we can predict and tell them how to build, how much to, <clears throat> sorry, how much to uh, forecast for the future from a storage perspective and things like that. Okay, okay. Let's talk a bit about ransomware because it is top of mind for, for so many organizations across Africa. And we heard a bit earlier in the discussion that it's, it's particularly a scourge on the African continent. Um, how does Veeam's portfolio support businesses in preventing, detecting, and recovering from these attacks? Sure. So... Again, back to data, but data being the lifeblood of everything. So as companies have evolved into digital businesses, if the data disappears or gets ransomed, then the company stops, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why it's such a successful business in, its, in the end. So where we start is effectively being the last line of defense for any customer, and that's backup, right? So we make sure that there's a copy of the data. It's secure. It hasn't been changed. It's been tested. It's recoverable. Customer knows that. If their environment was breached through the, the perimeters and something happened, 
they have their security that that last line of defense, which is Veeam, will bring them back. To do that, we have a lot of different technologies and functionality that we've integrated into the product, right? So we use the likes of machine learning and, and AI to do malware detection and anomaly detection while we're reading data mm -hmm. so that we can predict or as we're reading, we can, reading the data, we're able to identify uh, in, indicators of compromise or anomal anomalies and then report that to the, the customer, right? F above that, the intelligence of what's in the data we then provide through our Veeam1 um, and monitoring and analytics. And then further to that, extending the capability of the data to be stored onto different platforms like cloud. And that brings us to the data freedom. If a customer is compromised, then a lot of cases, they can't recover back into their traditional infrastructure or data center. We give them the flexibility to be able to recover those workloads into the likes of an AWS or an Azure mm -hmm. or any hyperscaler. So it's the flexibility, the freedom to recover, but also securing the data and ensuring that it is recoverable because a backup is essentially only as good as it can be recovered in the end. Mm -hmm. You must have actually seen some, uh, some ransomware attacks on some of your customers taking place. Um, companies that have gone through this process and deployed the 32110 three, yeah. policy, um, how quickly can they get up and running again after there's been an incident typically? So it all depends, right? Mm -hmm. Also, the first part of it is protecting the data, and that's what I explained essentially, and then making sure you have multiple copies so none are compromised. Yep. Um, but then it's also having an incident response plan in place. Right. If you're not prepared and you don't know where to recover, what to recover, how to recover, it's just going to take time and you'll just extend your downtime. Right. So we also have a product called Veeam Recovery, uh, Veeam Recovery Orchestrator, mm -hmm. which effectively defines that and automates that and helps the customer understand what data needs to be recovered in what fashion, um, what their RPOs, which is uh, recovery point objective, RTOs, recovery time objective, so how much dying time, how much data loss, understanding those variables, understanding how they're going to recover, what they're going to cover, in what sequence mm -hmm. to where, that essentially becomes the plan or the incident response plan or DR plan or whichever you want to call it. That's mapped. If an incident does occur, everyone in the business understands, okay, this is where we need to start, this is what we have to do, and it just makes that more seamless. Mm -hmm. Customers that don't have that in place, it's like, you know, it's chaos. It's mm -hmm. everyone's scrambling, trying to figure out, okay, what are we doing? What are we going to do? Um, and I actually spoke to a few customers at a CISO summit, and they actually run these tests with their board members and pretend that they've just been breached and then see how it plays out in the boardroom. See if they're running around like yeah, headless chickens. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And if there is no plan in place, effectively, that's what you see. But if you know, okay, this is step one, step two, step three, mm -hmm. Um, it's easily to follow, right? How many organizations actually have a robust plan in place? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the figures, but... Just I anecdotally. Think, I think more more need to have A lot more plans probably, in place. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You mentioned Veeam1. Yeah. Um, how does Veeam1 help organizations in the African context ensure the optim optimal performance of their data protection strategies and help them gain greater visibility into their infrastructure? Yeah, so... <clears throat> Veeam 1 basically ingests data from all the front-end platforms, be it the virtualization being some physical servers, um, as well as the backup infrastructure. So we collect historical data and live data, but we keep it historically, and then we can replay statistics against that. So if a customer is looking to maybe potentially add some more workloads to their environment, they mm -hmm. can use the modeling based off the data that we have to understand, okay, they will have to increase their storage, increase their compute by X amount because they want to add these certain workloads, right? So by keeping all of that data, we're able to give intelligence. Beyond that, we can give auditing, uh, for auditing purposes and protection purposes, we can give reporting that will say, the data has been protected, this data hasn't been protected, this data is not meeting SLA. Uh, we can also discover other types of intelligence which has been helpful to customers to um, rebalance their infrastructure, like certain servers that have been provisioned with too much resource, mm -hmm. certain servers or applications that have been under-resourced. And with that type of information, they can reallocate resources or reclaim resources and effectively ex expand their, their infrastructure. Okay. also helps customers understand if they're looking to migrate to maybe a hyperscaler, um, what that's going to look like, what needs to be moved where, how much data needs to be moved into the cloud, we can give some intelligence around that. Okay, okay. Lisa, 
Let me bring you in here. You're um, Senior Manager for Channel and Alliances. So, so let's focus a little bit on your channel partners. Brendan mentioned a bit earlier in the discussion uh, the importance of your, uh, your channel uh, to delivering solutions, solutions to your end user clients across the continent. Um, maybe expand a little bit, if you don't mind, on how your channel partners or what role your channel partners play in expanding Veeam's reach on the continent and the support you provide to them to ensure they're equipped to meet the needs of your end user clients. Yeah, sure. So, you know, um, we have different types of go-to-market strategies with our partners, depending on where their strengths lie. As we've mentioned before, we have a hybrid approach to how we drive our our business. So we have a lot of partners who would be our on-prem type resellers that would deliver on-prem solutions to our customers. We always try and drive a hybrid cloud strategy with the the ecosystem. So we'll we'll always try and drive... um, as a service type initiatives as well. Our BCSP, which is our Beam Cloud Services, Beam Cloud Service Provider pro- uh, Program, mm-hmm. has been going for, the, for a number of years uh, within, within our, our business and actually a very, very successful part of the business if you think about it because data, data sovereignty is such an important part of um, any customer's um, initiatives today. And in South Africa, it's an important thing that we need to be considerate of as well. So... What we are seeing a lot of in the partner ecosystem is they will sell an on-prem solution to customers as well as as a service. Mm -hmm. So those are the two areas. Plus, then we also work with the hyperscalers. So many customers would consider um, a multi-cloud strategy. Uh, We work with the alliances like Microsoft Azure, with AWS, GCP. So we give customers that freedom. So data freedom is something that we are very, very uh, pro and we, we support. And um, we would then offer customers that as an offering as well. We're also delivering a lot of um, opportunities to our partners by doing that, uh, giving them the ability to white label their services through these uh, hyperscalers to customers. Um, So that's also where the Alliance ecosystem plays an important part of our business is to to support our initiatives through our channel Um, And then also to offer specializations of where they see their strengths lie. Um, So it could be that you have partners that are more security focused. You know, we're talking about ransomware quite a bit today. Uh, How do those security uh, partners and vendors actually fit into our ecosystem? We are the the specialists in data management um, and working with the likes of the security vendors in the markets, we can really bring a, a great go-to-market and offering to, to, to our customers through our channel. And, you know, for us, partner first is the way that we go. So Brendan mentioned that uh, we do go out to customers, but we create opportunity together with the partner community um, to to drive um, our business in, mm-hmm. the, in the region. Okay. Mm. Now, um, we heard a bit earlier that um, many businesses, particularly outside South Africa on the African continent, are still on-premises mm. with their IT, um, but that is going to change. There is going to be a shift to, to cloud. Mm. Um, how do you help your channel partners um, who've grown up perhaps in an on-prem environment make mm. that shift to the cloud? Um, what sort of support do you provide to the, so to the channel? We've actually got some really good programs. You know, Our partner programs support partners around enablement. So there's some great free online training that they can go and skill up on. And again, it's focused on various um, segments. So if they are public cloud partners, which in the Africa side of things is probably not the the right example, but let's look at ransomware. Mm -hmm. If they really want to become more specialized in that that side of the business, um, there are some really specialized certifications that we can deliver to them. Online pre-sales and sales certifications. The great thing that we have now also done is we've rolled out uh, what we call hands-on labs. So we've got about 44 different types of hands-on labs that our partners can actually um, go and uh, request through our portal. And um, if they really want to deep dive the technology, they can then go and uh, spend time in these lab environments and get their hands dirty, Mm -hmm. really skill up their teams around the technology, around a specific area where they feel they're lacking the the, the experience and exposure. From there, we would then take them on a a journey of getting skilled up with our our instructor-led training. So we run uh, training to install, configure, and manage. 
And then we also have design and architecture training. So there's really a wide range of certifications that the partner community can skill up on. Like I said, if they want to really focus in a specific area, mm -hmm. that's really where we want them to be. Uh, we are we, with the alliance, the, the alliances that we have in the market as well. We're also seeing um, new partners that we may not have worked with. You know, we've been very much involved in the data center side of our business. Mm -hmm. So, working with the likes of the hyperscalers, we we're seeing a different type of partner wanting to work with them. Same with the security part, uh, landscape. A lot of security partners that we are starting to now engage with, uh, which is exciting because. That just means we can expand on, on our um, initiatives and really driving our strategy mm -hmm. into the African market with these various types of uh, partners in mind. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's, it's really helping channel partners um, beyond just uh, understanding the Veeam product set, but also helping them to help the customers deal with the broader challenges that they're facing and helping them understand concepts like ransomware and the impact it could have Correct. on them. Correct, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's shift uh, focus a little bit. With the rapid pace of technological innovation and uh, the digital transformation that we're seeing across the African continent, what are some of the emerging trends or innovations in the data resilience and protection space that African businesses should be aware of? And how is Veeam preparing to address these future challenges? Sure. So... First off, the, the likes of Kubernetes. That's a emerging technology that's been growing. And, and it's an open source uh, technology. Yes, mm -hmm. and there there is some paid versions of it. So mm -hmm. they basically took Kubernetes and have uh, forked it and added their own sort of flavor on top of that, uh, different UIs and stuff. And you can get some paid and supported versions. But mm -hmm. the concept of moving away from um, the architecture of a virtual machine to a container is something massive that's going to change and is changing uh, the, the likes of many customers and their infrastructure. So able to uh, improve the compute in the way that they use resource as well as what we call then cloud native, which is truly cloud native mm -hmm. because we're effectively just supporting an application and its dependencies and that allows us to then move it to any platform. So it becomes more agnostic because we're not tied into operating system, neither are we tied into any kind of physical hardware because we've abstracted so many layers, and then it can move wherever it wants. And that's pure data freedom. A lot of customers are moving that direction. Not everything can move there yet, um, but as the technology improves, so we'll see more and more workloads there. And I think that's a very key area uh, when it comes to data protection, data security. A lot of it initially was designed to be what we call stateless. Mm -hmm. So the idea was you could spin it up and as many as you want and delete it and destroy it and just continue that process. But... As the technology improved, we're seeing more and more data being driven into the platform and we have what we call stateful workloads. So you see databases running in containers, persistent storage volumes. So they want to preserve the state of the, the application when it comes up again. And that needs to protect, be protected. And that's where we're actually one of the market leaders when it comes to protecting that data, as well as moving that data across different platforms mm -hmm. as well when it comes to disaster recovery, backup, and so on. Mm -hmm. To further that, I think a technology that we're seeing, or not a technology, but a trend that we're seeing is uh, AI and machine learning being introduced into data protection as well as into security. Now, there's two aspects. There's the, the criminal aspect, where um, you can go into the dark web and you can find something like fraud GPT or worm GPT. <laughs> and these, of are, course. <laughs> these are tools that you pay for, like a chat GPT, mm -hmm. but on the dark web. And it can spit out a phishing email or it can give you some malicious code. It's got no guardrails on it like ChatGPT mm. would have. Um, and a lot of threat actors are using these types of tools to create new types of uh, scripts or uh, tools to attack and malware to attack customers and phishing emails, mm -hmm. which is making them more and more convincing. We're having to adopt machine learning and AI to protect against the adverse side of that, right? So we're using it to counter as well as to improve the way that we can act actively find threats, actively back up data, improve the way we back up data. It's an arms race. Exactly. It's, it's, it's on both sides. Mm. But then as companies also adopt AI and machine learning and they start uh, putting large language models in their environment and maybe training their own models, we'll have to start protecting those assets. If you think about the amount of compute that it takes to, to train a machine learning model, it's thousands or hundreds of thousands of rands of GPU and time and data that you had to train this model if it got 
deleted or corrupted, um, it's just a huge loss in revenue. So you'd want to protect, protect that data. Yeah. And that's where we're moving at protecting machine learning, protecting large language models, protecting vector databases and things like that, as well as integrating uh, AI and machine learning into our product to make us more efficient, more autonomous, better at identifying data, better at protecting data, as well as better at, at identifying threats and security vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. Lastly, then, um, it's clear that, that there are many organizations that are not doing enough to protect themselves. Um, and uh, no doubt some of them will be listening to this, watching this podcast and asking themselves some, questions, some serious questions about what they need to do. Um, maybe as a way of, of concluding, and, and feel, both feel free to jump in here, but maybe I'll start with you, Ian. Um, what are some of the actionable steps that African organizations should be taking to build a robust data resilience strategy? And maybe leading into that, how can Veeam help guide them along the way? So data security and data resilience are, are, are two separate themes, and it's actually quite cool if you unpack it. So okay. resi resilience is the idea that you can continuously evolve for the security threats, where is in the past you set up cybersecurity or data security strategies, and it was you, there's a known threat that you're protecting yourself from. But data resilience is the ability to shift, so you don't know gotcha. what's coming, what's changing, where the new attack vector is coming from, mm -hmm. and you have to be able to quickly adapt quickly plug that. Mm -hmm. So it's about putting certain measures in place, things like a 32110 strategy, very basic concept, and then leveling up from that, making sure that environments are secure, security best practices, following things like that, um, helps you to at least have a safe base. But then you must be able to be forward thinking and understand that threats are always going to change. There's always going to be a new zero day vulnerability mm -hmm. or a new attack vector or something that's going to have the potential to breach your infrastructure and you must be prepared. So it's preparedness um, as well as being open to, to and build, build a solution in a way that it can adapt and change mm -hmm. effectively. Mm -hmm. That's the resilience part of it. Okay. Any final thoughts? Well, for me, I think uh, Ian said a lot of it, but mm -hmm. being proactive is definitely, you have to be these days. Um, so, you know, and I think Mina and Brendan also alluded to it earlier on, is the fact that customers come to us when it's too late. So it's about having that plan in place. It's about working with specialists that actually know how to support you in, an, in a case of an attack. Mm -hmm. um, it's working with the right kind of partners, uh, the right types of um, people that are very strategic and know exactly what they're doing. And being able to actually, when you do have an attack, um, to recover it from, from, from it as quickly as possible. That's really the importance of this. Because it's not if, it's when. So for more information on Veeam's portfolio of data resilience uh, solutions, the website is veeam.com, is it? Yes. And that's spelled V-E-E-A-M. Yes. yes. Veeam.com. Yes. Go check it out. Ian Engelbrecht is Head of Technical Sales for Africa at Veeam, and Lisa Stradom is Senior Manager, Channel and Alliances for Africa. Lisa and Ian were joined earlier by Veeam's Mina Migali and Brendan Woodlake. Uh, thank you so much to all four of you for a fascinating mm -hmm. discussion today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.